Hi everybody, it's Karen here from tapascolor.co.uk and thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, this is the card that I have been making today. Um, I saw one very similar to this in a Facebook group that I belong to and it was posted by a Stamping Up demonstrator named Donna Todd and she said that she was inspired by another demonstrator called Cindy Lawrence. So Donna and Cindy, thank you very, very much for the idea um, and this is my version of it. Stay with me, I'll show you how I made it. Here are the things that I'm going to use for the actual Santa face card. Uh, my card base is Thick Whisper White. It's 11 and a half inches by 4 inches, scored and folded at 5 and 3 quarters. I'm going to cover the entire front with a piece of petal pink, so that's 4 inches by 5 and 3 quarters. Uh, I've got some real red. Now I think this is also 4 inches by 5 and 3 quarters. The important thing actually is that it's 4 inches wide. And I have a piece of this. This is the white velvet paper. And this is in, uh, it, it, well, it's just kind of a special. It's only on sale in November 2018. And it, I don't, it doesn't really come across well on video, but it has a beautiful flocked surface. I've got the curls and swirls embossing folder. I'm going to be doing a little bit of sponging with grey granite and blushing bride and I have got some scraps of different colour card for my paper piecing so that is petal pink, this basic black, some whisper white, I've got some blushing bride and I've also got some powder pink. I have my uh, layering ovals framelits and uh, I'm going to be using several small circle punches. I've just got a couple of them out here, but I'm probably going to use more sizes than just the two that I'm showing you right now. For the stamped sentiment, I'm going to use uh, Labels to Love, Versamark ink and white embossing powder. I've done some work ahead of time to try and keep this video uh, a reasonable length. So I have my velvet paper which I've cut to four inches wide and on the back I've marked a line halfway so that's at two inches and then um, I found something round to draw around which in my case was uh, this um, disc compass and I just placed it on my on, on the center line that I'd drawn drew an arc moved it up an inch drew another arc flipped it round and drew another arc. So they should all be the same curve. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take my snips and I'm just going to cut round those lines. Now I think this is actually a little bit longer than I need, but we'll adjust that when we come to it. So I'm just very carefully cutting around those lines that I've drawn. I'm working on the reverse side, I think I said. Uh, so nobody will see these, these lines. There we go. All right. So now I have two pieces of my flock card that look a bit like that. And I'm going to take my curls and swirls embossing folder and I'm going to put my pieces of velvet card inside my folder. I'm going to close it over and I'm going to take this through the big shot and the sandwich that I'm going to use is the platform without any adapter and two embossing plates. So I'm going to go and do that, two cut plates I should say, I'm going to do that, I'll be right back. So here's the piece of velvet paper that was left behind when I cut away the hat band and the beard uh, and here's my piece of poppy parade and this is going to be the back of the of the card so I've used my ruler again to measure um, the halfway mark and uh, to draw and I've used this to draw a, uh, a matching curve so I'm going to cut this piece out and that's going to be my Santa's hat and then the rest of it I can keep for another day uh, and on the reverse of this piece I've drawn a, a kind of a, 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 a comma shape or a teardrop shape that's kind of off to one side this is going to be Santa's moustache so I'm going to fold that in half and just with my snips I'm just going to cut 
that shape out. Now, if you happened to have a, uh, a paisley die, paisley shaped die, um, and Stampin' Up! did carry them once upon a time, we did have uh, a lovely, lovely set of paisley dies, then you could use that to cut these, these pieces out. But uh, do you know what? Doing it with the, the scissors is just as easy. And again, I'm going to pop over to the Big Shot and I'm going to emboss this. So again, give me a couple of seconds, I'll be right back with you. And while I was over at the Big Shot, uh, I used the smallest of the layering ovals framelits to cut, uh, cut this shape out of powder pink. No, it's not powder pink, it's petal pink. Alright, so that is going to be Santa's nose. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of sponging. So I'm going to start with grey granite and the petal pink pieces. And I'm just going to, actually, probably best if I just put some of that down onto my splodgy mat and just pick this up with my very soft brush. This is a three quarter of an inch circle punch. So let's have a look how that does for his eyes. So if I put his eyes there and then his nose. Yeah, is that how's that looking? He's looking a bit dead eyed at the moment. I I will give you that because uh, the eyes have got no white in them, but we'll we'll sort that out in just a moment. Have no fear. Okay. So let's start by popping his eyes in place. Centered. And this is a one quarter of an inch circle punch. And I'm using Whisper White and I'm just going to punch out two little pieces just like that. I'll put the top back on the brushing bride. Okay, and I'm going to put two little spots of glue. going to put some adhesive on the lower part of my card and on the curve of Santa's moustache and about a quarter of the way down because I'm probably going to have a bit overhanging the edge here and I don't really want to deal with it while it's all covered in adhesive because that way I'm going to get really sticky. put some liquid adhesive along the brim of Santa's hat and along the top edge of the piece of fur. And 
And now his moustache. Last of all, last of all for now, is his lovely pink nose, and I think I'll pop that up on a dimensional. Let's just give this a little bit more shape. Just a couple of dimensionals. And there we go. Flip him over and with my large scissors I'm going to trim away this excess velvet paper. So here's the piece of poppy parade card that I had left over after I cut out Santa's hat. So I'm going to use this to stamp my sentiment on. And I'm going to give it a jolly good coat of embossing buddy first of all, because I'm going to be using white embossing powder and that is going to show up if there's any in any place that I don't want it to be. So I'm inking up the sentiment which says celebrate a wonderful year with my first mark ink and I'm holding it onto the card for a few seconds to give that ink plenty of time to transfer so I'm just checking I think that's the way I want it and, uh, get my coffee filter here to catch the embossing powder and just sprinkle that over the top and that's looking good to me so let's pop the extra embossing powder back in the pot and put that out of the way before I actually emboss the whole thing right heat embossing heat gun on high Give it a few seconds to warm up and then I'm going to heat my powder from underneath. <laughs> Now I'm going to die cut out my stamped and embossed message with the smallest but one of the layering ovals. So I'm going to hop over to my big shot and come back when I finish. After I'd been over to the big shot and uh, cut this out, um, I decided that actually that sentiment is really more of a, a new year kind of sentiment. So I uh, did it again, but this time I used this sentiment, Happy Christmas to you and yours. And I think Santa will be much happier with that. Got a couple of dimensionals, which I shall put onto the back of my oval. And I'm going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive here as well, because the velvet paper is textured and I've also come along and um, run it through my embossing folder and um, in between takes I've also just given it a, a bit of a light sponging I know I couldn't help myself I've just given it just a little bit of the grey granite just to just to bring out the shadows and the highlights a little bit Okay, so uh, one other thing. This is a uh, I'd punched out for another project, and then I found I didn't need. So, uh, as you know, crafters never waste anything. So I'm just going to put a little bit of my liquid adhesive onto the back of that, and I'm going to stick it to his hat. And to make it look like mistletoe, I have some of pearl basic jewels. So I'm going to pick one up and um, and again because I'm using uh, I'm working on a textured paper I'm going to not rely on the self-adhesive that's on the back of the pearls 
I'm going to use. Actually, I think I'll use the other end of this. This is a nifty little tool. You have a choice of you have a choice of uh, weapons, if you like. And yes, I know there's an awful lot of glue there, and that looks messy. But don't worry. When it dries, it will be transparent. You won't even notice it's there. So let's make this look like a couple of mistletoe berries. Now all that I have left to do while that adhesive dries is to bring in my card blank. I've got my card front onto the card blank. And there you go. And there it is. That is my finished uh, my finished card. And I do hope that you've enjoyed it. I haven't done a paper pieced card in quite a while. Um, and I have to admit that was lots and lots of fun. But for now that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you again sometime soon. Bye bye.